Hi everyone and welcome to my channel my name is Jane so today's video is all about my patchwork dress I took five fabrics stitched them all together made some patchwork fabric created a dress so let me show you what I did So yeah, I was just inspired by this picture. It's been on my Pinterest board for quite some time. And I thought, yeah, I would love to recreate something like that. And the first thing that came into my mind was my, one of my dresses, possibly the Primrose dress or the Peggy dress. And I just thought either of those dresses were like perfect for that style. Now that patchwork dress there, which I found on Pinterest is from a very old uh, Victorian dress. Obviously in them days they had to make do and mend and obviously the dress was made out of patchwork pieces put together. And I just thought that is perfect. I'm definitely gonna try that one day. So originally I was going to use was some pastel -y kind of floral fabrics that I found in a storage box of fabrics that I had from when I used to have my shop and I'll show you them here and I just opened up this storage box and these were just there on the top all unused they're all I would say apart from possibly that one there I would say they're all like a quilting quilting cotton which is fine they're 100% cotton lovely fabrics floral obviously i was originally going to use these i was going to like put them all together make a nice spring summer dress just like that picture but then i thought well we're in february almost march but i'm in england and you know we've still got quite a few months yet of cool cool weather and i just thought if i make this now it's going to hang in my wardrobe for could be a couple of months for could even be four months probably june july before we get anything warm enough so i thought Yes, I'm going to make this one using these fabrics, but first things first, I thought I'd make an autumn winter dress. And that's how this one was created. Now, you can see the fabrics behind me here and there. They are homespun fabrics, again, that I had in my shop. These were all the way from the United States. I got them imported and I used to use these fabrics. I used to call it homespun fabric again, 100% cotton fabrics. I used to use them in my shop. I used to um, use them too, because I used to make wooden signs, rustic signs. I was very primitive. I used to love all the primitive stuff. And my shop was just like the American version of a primitive country shop, but in England. Oh, I absolutely adored it, I loved it. And I used to use all these fabrics for adding little trims to handles, rusty wire handles, wrapping round. I've got my candle. Yeah, here we go. Wrapping round candle jars. In fact, am I wearing one? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There it is. So there we go. There it is. There's an example. That's what we used to put around the jars and things like that in my shop. And that's what these fabrics were for. So they've been piled up behind me for quite some time and I, I am a little bit tight with my fabrics I hate cut I don't know whether you're like me but I hate cutting into fabrics once I've cut in I'm fine but I do get a little bit precious with my fabrics and I just thought they make a nice little pretty backdrop and so they shall remain but you know when you think about it I wanted to make a rustic dress autumn winter dress and these just spoke to me said use me so the pile's gone down a little bit but there's still plenty left so my next decision, obviously I'm going to show you, I've got little bits of footage I'll show you. I haven't shown you the, the full making of the dress. I'll explain the reason to that later. Uh, but I've got some footage of me sewing the fabrics together. And also I was um, also inspired by my patchwork, my patchwork quilt that I'm making at the minute. For those of you who are following me, I know I'm digressing a little bit, um, but I'm on to, I've, I've made 1,000 of the cream interlink hexagons now, so I'm almost there. Maybe a few more hundred to go, and then I'm going to start adding the cream interlink to the flowers. So that's what I'm doing there. And that kind of inspired me too, and, and I'm working, those colours are kind of all the nice autumn, winter, rustic colours. And I thought, yeah, let's make a dress. So my next dilemma was choosing which, which fabrics which homespun fabrics was I going to choose? Now I was going to put in this, this one, 
but I felt as if it just popped too much compared to the rest. In the end, I went for five fabrics in the end. So I've got some scrap of what I've got left. So I went for that one there, like blue and um, blue and like a burgundy. And then that one there, which is like the burgundy check. Then again, the green check with burgundy in it. Then a rustic brown and then a nice navy check or plaid. If you're in the US, you say plaid. So I went for those five in the end and that took me a while to decide because I'm a bit of a fuss pot when it comes to working out what I was going to use. So what I did was I thought, well, I'm not obviously that dress, that vintage Victorian era dress was much smaller squares. And I just thought, no, I'm not going to go for that because that would take me forever. So I got my quilting ruler and I just used my quilting ruler for ease and speed and I thought well, because it's my first attempt to do and making a garment with patchwork fabric as such I thought well I'll go for this first see how it goes and then any errors or mistakes or things I've learned along the way and then I can obviously address and when I do my spring summer dress with this pile here um, then obviously I can um, uh, you know do, just do it slightly differently because I've, I've learned quite a bit from doing it this way so I just used this ruler, which is a six inch ruler to cut and my rotary cutter. So I just thought, right, how am I gonna get, how am I gonna get some patchwork fabric? So what I did was, as you can see, put some footage up of me. I cut strips using my ruler, six inch strips. And then what I should have done was, which I, you'll see me in some of the footage there, I was going to overlock the strips and then I decided not to because something in my head said overlock when it's stitched together, which obviously when it's stitched together, it's really hard to overlock when you have the intersections. So if this dress falls apart in the wash, that's the reason why, because it's only partly overlocked. It's overlocked when I made the dress, if you know what I mean, overlocked the seams and what are you, but the actual patchwork fabric is not all overlocked. I'll try and show you a little bit. So then I obviously stitched my strips together and I decided which 
uh, order I wanted to my fabrics so there's one two three four and five so five and then I repeated it again and kept on repeating it so I got like a good width of fabric So I had them all in strips like this and then what I had to do was turn the fabric around and then use my ruler, cut the strips of fabric that way. So then obviously I had the strips of fabric and then I had to then use my ruler to cut across the strips of fabric to give me then the squares and then you then stitch those strips of squares to the next strip of squares and obviously you can see the back of this leftover piece. I didn't overlock it. And also another point is if you're gonna do something like this, when you obviously stitch, the stitch them together in the strips and then you cut across with your, your rotary cutter or your scissors, you're then going to weaken the seam because you've opened, you've opened it up. So I have got one point on my dress where I need to go in and hand stitch. It's just there, no one knows it's there, but I know it's there. A tiny, tiny bit, it's gonna come away, you can see. I just need to go in and stitch that. So obviously you've got to remember that because you're, you're weakening it. Now that's where I should have overlocked. I should have overlocked my strips, then sewn the strips together, then when I cut, them up and put them in the opposite direction at least it would have been mainly overlocked so yeah i wish i'd done that but i'll show you what i mean so in the end don't look if i was in if it was a competition for the interior of a, a garment i wouldn't win so what i did in the end after i stitched stitched it together i managed to overlock the the ones that were like going one way but obviously it's very difficult to overlock them going that way because you then come to the junction there and you overlock, you've got to stop, so nightmare. But yeah, we won't talk about the inside. And obviously when it goes in the wash, it may all come out in 50,000 squares where they've all untangled. But I don't think it will. It's all well and truly stitched together as a garment. It's just the patchwork part. So lesson learned there. So when I come to do my spring summer one, I will then, I will overlock each piece, each strip, both sides of each strip then put the strips together then they're already overlocked and then you don't have to worry about overlocking that's right jody i don't think yeah i've got obviously a repeat there and there i couldn't just could not do it any other way but it, my mum said it looks quite good because it's on the side and repeat there and there but i don't think i've got any other repeats where the two of the same Oh, well there, yeah, maybe there at the back. One there at the back. Just at the back, yeah. So it's no, it's no big issue. And I've managed to line up all my squares without trying too hard, which was absolutely amazing, because normally you're going to get one out of sync, but they've all lined up spot on. Now, obviously, if I'd have gone for the smaller square, that probably wouldn't have been the case, but because they were like the six-inch square, bigger square, I think, to deal with, and the dress so some of you may recognize what it is some of you may not this is the hack of my latest sewing pattern that's coming out in mid-march fingers crossed it's just today very today it's gone for the pattern testers hopefully the lovely testers will come back and say it's going to be okay and i just thought i wonder if i could maybe hack hack the blouse make it into a dress because I like the long sleeves and the gathered cuff because it's autumn winter style too. I thought well, I'll go with the long sleeve version. So what I did was I took off, tw um, I think it's 26 centimeters off the bodice length to shorten it. 
and then I just made the, to, just to make it a little bit different, I tweaked the cuffs, I folded the cuffs in half again, so they're a bit narrower than the blouse cuff, just to make it look a little bit different. But then obviously the Ava blouse has like um, a top stitch seam going down the middle. Now, I didn't want the centre of my patchwork to look with a seam because then I was thinking, well, if I put a seam in down the middle, it's going to make that square a lot thinner than all the other squares. And it wouldn't look right. It would have looked, it just wouldn't have looked right. So rather than putting the seam down, I cut the bodice on the fold and then I made like a little face, little facing for the centre opening. So the little facing stitched it down underneath, a tiny little facing, which then avoided any centre seam. So it all flows. And obviously there's no seam down the back and there's obviously just opening just to put your head in so you can get it on easily and I just thought because it is quite not loud or fussy but a bit full on obviously I just went for the plain necktie version rather than the pussy bow version I just thought it might be over the top a bit with the pussy bow and I thought, well, I'll see how it goes with this one. If I like this version, then maybe I might be able to do this like a short sleeve version in the like spring summer fabrics. Do like the short sleeve version and maybe do the pussy bow. But we shall see. But overall, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. I went down, made it yesterday. John was like, did you just make that one? I love it. I said, what do you think? He said, oh, I love it. And I said, I've got to go and show my mum because I was going to show my mum. So I went and knocked on the door. She was just like, oh, it's the homespun fabric. I said, I oh, know. It's getting used at long last. It's been left unloved for quite some time. It's amazing. I'll pop some like full length pictures up of me wearing it so you can see. Now I could have made it longer, but it would have meant I had to, I had to make another like um, section of patchwork fabric. And I just thought, oh, I'll just see how long this one comes. And I would say it's like midi length. It's not maxi, it's not knee. It's midi length, which is absolutely fine. And my intention is to wear it just over my jeans as I do with my boots as I do and I love it and I've got a little vest on underneath I you could wear a long sleeve top I could wear probably a, um, a higher neck skinny tee underneath cute with a cardigan it looks it's gonna look cute with like a little vest over the top all the colors I mean tell me what you think but I really do love it and I just think oh didn't say and it's got pockets but yeah, so that is my patchwork dress. I had an absolute blast sewing my fabrics together, creating some patchwork fabric, and it's ideal if you, like me, have a lot of fabric that you haven't, I mean, I had, I have a lot of fabric, but if you have a lot of like remnants, you haven't got enough to make strips, but you've got enough to make some squares, you could cut all your scraps up into squares, sew them all together, then sew them all into strips, and then you've got your patchwork fabric. And then it's going to be unique to you. No one else in the world is going to have your patchwork fabric like this dress. No one else in the world is going to have this dress. I mean, how amazing is that? So now I just need somewhere to go to wear it. So, but yeah. So let me know what you think. I'd love to read your comments. And if you did like today's video, don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up and tell all your friends who may be interested too and also if you'd like to see more of my creative content please do come over and join me on my patreon page links in the box below that's it for today's video thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it i'll see you on my next soy video bye for now